Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, I'm going to do another journal entry and we're going to talk about something that I recently applied in a game that we've been creating here at InfoGamer. And that is how to apply a random color to an object. So to begin, we're going to create a new script. So we'll go to our script folder and then we'll go create C sharp script. And then we're going to name it random color. Now we need to create an object that we can apply the color to. So let's go to our hierarchy window, click create, 2D object, then sprite. Now, since our sprite doesn't have an image, we need to apply it an image so that we can see it. So let's go to our sprite folder and we're going to just use this circle image for now. So we'll click on that and drag it into our, the sprite field. Now we can see that our circle is there in our scene. So let's go ahead and center this in our scene. And then I'm going to scale it up to 5. And we don't need to scale it in the Z because it's a 2D image. And now let's go ahead and rename this. I'm going to say color object. Now we need to go back to our scripts and open our random color script in Visual Studios. Once it's open, we can go ahead and get rid of the update function. And then we're going to need to create a couple new variables. So the first one is going to be a color. So it's color with capital C. And then we're going to also want to make this public. So public color. And then the variable name will also be color, but with a lowercase c. Now we need to create a couple float variables. And these are going to be private. So we'll say private and then float. And the first one we're going to call r color. Then the next one is private also, and it's float. And we'll call this g color. We'll call this g color. And finally, we're going to create a private float and call this B color. Once we have those floats, we need to create a, a variable to hold our sprite. So this is going to be public. Whoops. Public. And it's a sprite renderer. And then we'll just call it sprite with a lowercase s. Now what we need to do is create a new function that we're going to call in our start function. So we'll go down to the bottom and we'll say void and we'll call it color function. There's no parameters for this function, but now what we need to do inside this function is generate three random values for our three floats. So the first one, we're going to say our color, and then we're going to set it equal to random dot range. And the parameters to this rain function range function are zero comma one. What this does is it generates a floating point number between 0 and 1, and then it stores it in our R color variable. So let's go ahead and copy this line of code. And then we will paste it two more times. And what we need to do is change the variable name to match our three floats, so G color and then B color. So the reason we want to generate a random value between 0 and 1 for each of these three components to our color is because the RGB represents red, green, blue for our color. And with those three components, we can generate any color there is on our digital display. 0 represents no color, 
and one represents full intensity of that color. So if we had 0, 0, 0 for RGB, that would equal black. If we had 1, 1, 1, it would actually equal white. When it comes to color and printing, you would think when you mix all the colors together, you end up getting brown. But when we're dealing with light and color, full intensity of all three colors, RGB, will end up equaling white. Now, if we had one for red and zero for the other two colors, we'd end up getting full red. If we had one for green and zero for the others, we would get full green. And so we can give different values, different floating point values for each component and actually end up getting all the colors there are. But these three floating point numbers won't give us a color alone by themselves. And so we need to apply them to a color. And in order to do this, we need to use our color variable. So color with the lowercase c, and we need to set it equal to a new instance of a color. And to do this, we use what's called a constructor. And so in order to use a constructor, we type new and then color with a capital C to get the class. Then we use parentheses like it's a function. And so a constructor is a function like any other function that you write for a class, but it's a special function because this is what creates a new instance of it. And so for parameters to the color function, it takes in three values. And those three values correspond to our three floating point numbers. So as you can see, if we type R color and then tab in this prompt window, you'll see float R, float G, float B. So R is for red, G is for green, and B is for blue. So let's type in the other two values that we have. So we'll do space, then G color, comma, B color. Once we do that, we can hit, we can type semicolon to finish that line. And now we have a new color and it's been randomized because we generated random num values for each of the three components to our color. So now what we need to do is apply this color to our sprite. And so on a new line, we're going to type sprite with lowercase s, then we'll type dot and then color, and we'll set it equal to our color with the lowercase c. Once we type that, it applies the color to our sprite. Now all we need to do is call our function in the start function. So in the start function, we'll type color function, and then parentheses and a semicolon. Now, when we save it and go back to Unity, I'm going to apply our random color script to our color object. You could apply it to an empty object, but I'll just apply it to the color object. And now you can see here, we have two public variables in our inspector. One is our color and the other is our sprite. And since I am not using a git component, what we can do is just drag our color object into the sprite field. Once you do that, you can now hit play and it should generate a random color for our circle. And it's black. So we must have messed something up. Let's try it one more time. If it's still black, then we definitely messed something up. Okay, so let's go back to Visual Studios and see what we did wrong. And I can see if we change these values to floats, by typing an F after that, it should fix the problem. Because if you don't type an F, it'll think that the zero and the one are integers and it'll calculate a random integer, which we don't want because we want flo floating point values. So let's go ahead and save that and see if it fixed our problem. And there you go. It must have fixed our problem because it generated a different color other than black. So let's try it again. Yeah. And so with this function and this set of code, you can generate any random color there is. So let's show you it a few more times. I'm going to hit play. 
And to really show how this works, let's actually put back in our void update function so we don't have to keep restarting it. So update and and then inside our update, let's say if, and then we type input dot get button down and we'll type fire one. So this gets the, whenever someone clicks the mouse, the left mouse button. So now inside this if statement, we can type color function And now when we save that, go back to Unity, hit play, all I have to do now to generate a new color is click the mouse button. So every time I click, it generates a new color for our circle. So different situations that you could apply this code is say you were playing, a, you had a multiplayer game one that I can think of that's pretty popular right now is Slither.io. Now Slither.io doesn't use this variety of color. It doesn't have as much randomization to it. It actually has probably only a, a few sets of colors. Now you can actually pick your own color, but when it first came out, you only had a few sets of color, but every time you joined a match, it would pick one of those colors for you to be. Now imagine if they had used this script to generate their color, they would have had a lot more variety in the color of the snakes. Another idea that you could use this for is say you had a random weapon generator or a random enemy generator, then you could apply a random color to that weapon pickup or the enemies and you could have all sorts of different colors. Say you had like an orc and more variety did the color of the orc. You could have like purple orcs and green orcs or yellow orcs and so on. Now this concludes this journal entry. I hope it was informative and that you learned how to generate a random color. If it's still confusing, you're welcome to go back and watch it again or leave us any questions you have in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends.